All right, we'll go live in three, two, one. Jordan, what's up? Thanks for stopping by. Hi, Levi. How you doing? I'm a little sick, so if I sound really weird, that's probably why. But other than that, I'm good. Awesome. Well, you have been one of my most anticipated guests just because oh, of... Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm serious. Just because... I, I was talking to Ricky, for yeah. listeners out who don't know, that's uh, Jordan's brother, one of my best friends as well. And like ever since I first started the podcast, I was talking about how I definitely wanted to have you on, but I was waiting a little bit longer. Um, but just because of like the values you have and how conscious and involved you are with things that are going on around the world, you know, and you're really selfless and everything and you already know like how much respect I have for you. So that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on and you may not know it, but like a lot of people have actually like DM me like, when are you going to have Jordan on? No. Just because I promise. Yeah. That's people crazy. like I get little DMs here and there just because people that are like follow you and know yeah. that I know you. That's true. Yeah. They're just, they're just like, Hey, when are you going to have Jordan on? So I'm glad that we finally, yeah, I'm glad to do this. Yeah. We got to make it happen. So before we get too deep into this, um, why don't you talk a little bit about yourself exactly mm. like what you do, who you are for the listeners who don't really know who you are yeah um my name is jordan santos um and i say that like i'm at this point 50 percent like a social media sh strategist freelancer and then 50 percent of me is also like what you would call it quote unquote influencer for lack of a better word do you like that word i hate it <laughs> but it's like people say like blogger and stuff like that but I also don't blog, so, you know, I really don't know what else to call me. It's kind of just like a blanket term, but yeah. I guess that's what what we can call it for now. Can we call you like a social media guru or something? <laughs> Does that sound better? I, don't I know. mean, yeah, I guess that that covers like half of what I do. So, you know, half of it, the social media freelancer side, um, you know, I got into that by being in in the social media industry for the past i think six years now right. um i started off in um influencer marketing well before that i went to pepperdine university where i studied pr and i always thought i was going to go into fashion public relations okay and then once i graduated social media s like really took off and i was offered a job in the influencer marketing space right and it was really in the beginning when you know, influ social media influencers were just becoming a thing. It was like the rise of the Viners and when bloggers were starting to get recognized. And I started working for a company when all of that was very new. Like we were paying people like $10 and $100 and that was like cool. For the posts? Yeah, for their posts. Oh, so it was kind of crazy to see it from the start and see how it's evolved now. Yeah. So I was there for um, a year and I was really like creating these campaigns. So we actually like worked with Revolve Clothing back in the day when was they were really new. And, you know, like if a brand would be like, hey, we want to pay you $10,000 to work with 10 influencers or 20 influencers with like this demographic, I would be the one to put that together. OK, so I saw the ins and outs of influencer marketing and I just saw that you know, brands were paying a lot of money to work with the influencers, but their social media accounts weren't set up. And I was like, no one's going to follow. No one's going to buy their stuff if their social media accounts don't look a certain way, even with all of this traffic. Right. So from there, that's when I started working at Swim Social. Um, I met the founder, Elena, at like, I think a hair salon once. <laughs> and she reached out to me and she was like, hey, I have this new company that I'm starting and I do social media management okay so she started doing a social media and what what year was this this was 2014 2015 and what year did you graduate from Pepperdine 2013 2013 okay. yeah um so I started working with her and we were it was just us two for a bit but we you know we're working on building the social media accounts for different brands and businesses so really like starting starting from scratch like what's their username gonna be what's their bio what um, we have to create content for the pa social media pages um, you know reaching out to influencers like very micro influencers because a lot of the times brands didn't have budget to pay influencers and the first account 
that swim social ever had was Alfred Coffee, which Alfred Coffee. I have it here. But <laughs> I see it. Yeah. Um, so that was like their first account and it's obviously like grown so much and it's like an LA staple at this point. How but small were they when you started working with them? Swim social? No, Alfred oh, Coffee. Alfred. Oh, they only had one location. Oh really? And now they have six and now he has like shops in wow. Japan. That's yeah. so cool to see that you yeah. kinda grew with them, right? Yeah, and it yeah, it's been I just like feel like it's so like culturally relevant in LA, so it's really yeah. cool to be a part of that. But we've also like worked with um I'm trying to think like Selena Gomez's revival tour was an account. Um we worked with like Ashley Tisdale. Okay. Jay Ellis who's on the show Insecure. Um I don't know why I'm like forgetting all of like the brands that we worked <laughs> with. I for some reason only the personalities are coming to mind, but okay. there's a I think it was like we had like 30 wow. 30 clients at one point. Okay. And so I was managing not only some clients, but I was managing a team of like four or five girls um by the time I left after 3 years there. Wow, so the company really grew. Yeah. as well with you. Um and to kind of backtrack a little bit, I, th I think it's super interesting just how you got involved in it. And I think it was kind of just like good timing, would you say, too, because of the fact that like right now it's like the thing to do to kind of yeah. be involved in social media. But back when you were in college, there wasn't really like a career path to do it, right? Right. No, there wasn't any like now, you know, I hear about like social media classes yeah, and social really media majors. And mm -hmm. I think that's <laughs> awesome. But when I was going to school, I was a public relations major. And I think we had one class my senior year where it was like a very small portion was like this like old man teaching us about social media. Whereas like <laughs> now looking back, I'm like he had no idea like yeah. really how to use no it. No one really did like no, yeah. not have an idea, but no one really knew like how prominent it would be today. Right. Right. So I feel like that's awesome that you got started in it mm -hmm. and yeah, it just seems like perfect timing for you. Yeah, you know? it was really it was really good timing. I think, like you said, it's all about timing and also about the people you know in this industry. Yeah, that's a big thing, Net, like networking with people. Yeah, because, you know, my first job in social media, it was a guy I had gone to Pepperdine with and then Elena I had met at a hair salon. That's true. And then, you know, that was like my job. And soon after... So in social, I worked at KKW Beauty and did their social media for a bit. And that came through a connect that I had. Wow. Um, and then now I'm doing social media freelancing. So I run a, a handful of accounts on my own. And, you know, all of the clients I've had were from connections and they weren't from like cold emailing or cold calling. Wow. That's yeah. super interesting. The connections you make can take you so far. Yeah. How is it being a freelancer? Like, what are some of the, like, I guess, pros and cons of being a, fr a freelancer, would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just, like, funny because a lot of people, they're always like, oh, like, I can't wait to not, like, work for a company and just become a freelancer. But it's not as easy as you think. I think a lot of people think that, they're like, oh, it's so great. I could have, like, coffee dates and the afternoon and go to the gym whenever it's like no you still have a shit ton of work to do yeah um but i will say that for me personally like i've always craved freedom in a job so that so once i became freelance i really you know freedom was what i valued i'm able to like go on trips when i want i'm able to take on the clients that i want so those are the pros i would say and i think the cons is that you really you know you're responsible for the money you're bringing in it's like the amount of money you make is dependent on how hard you work um so you know you can't just like have like a lazy day or a lazy week or a lazy month because that will re reflect directly on you and not so much on the company that's paying you yeah is it scary like when instagram kind of just like rolls out all these updates and just like i guess like you know sometimes it goes down sometimes yeah. and everything like that is that kind of scary just like to the fact that like that's your livelihood and not it's, it's completely in your control but right. like instagram who knows what can happen yeah. to it is yeah. that like scary to you i i think it's scary yeah i think you know i mean it's scary and it's not because like you know when instagram goes down and everyone's freaking out like 
I'm frustrated, but yeah. I also know that at the same time, we're not like saving lives. It's not, <laughs> it's not life or death, you yeah, know? So true. it's like, that's something you can't really control, but it does suck that like your work is dependent on this, on this app that you don't have control of. Yeah. Um, and in terms of like all the updates, yeah, it's kind of with social media, you always have to be like thinking on your feed and just like being able to adapt to certain situations because when Instagram stories rolled out, then all of the brands like wanted daily Instagram stories and yeah. oh, it seems simple, but that's like a lot more work than just one to two posts a day. That's so much more content yeah, to push out. Yeah, exactly. And it's like a different type. Yeah, when did you know that like social media, you can make a career out of social media? Was there like a certain like situation that happened where you're just like, you know what, I can actually, or like a light that switched that like I can actually like pursue this and make a career out of it. Was there any moment? Mm, I mean, I, I always believed in it ever since I did start in influencer marketing. It just, it did show me how much like access brands got by working with influencers. And then when I worked on the other side of things and working with the brands, I just saw how much, how much social media was so important to their business. So right. I kind of knew that it was going to be, you know, an important aspect for any like business. Right. Mm -hmm. Also too, like with, with the platform that you have right now, how many followers do you have that you don't really? Um, let me check. <laughs> See, that's so cool that like you, you're so free from like your account, you know, a lot of like, I feel like a lot of quote unquote influencers, if I ask them that question, they'd be like 67.8K or something. Like, you know? <laughs> I have 66.9. Okay. See? Is what it says. See, like with a platform like that, I love that you use, you use it in like a positive manner um, in a sense where like you use it to promote like things that are going on in society, like mm -hmm. racial, socioeconomic issues that are happening, which is like really commendable because not everybody is doing that. And it's always... It's always good to see people using their platform for something good like that, right? right? So how talk about like the important importance of doing that for you. Yeah, I mean, you already know like my backstory, but I think I just like started doing this more so because of like the story I have and the experience I've had as a passenger in a dr drunk driving crash. Mm -hmm. Um you know, and like it's crazy. So in I think it was 20 in 2012, I was a passenger in a drunk driving crash. And um, I was sitting in the passenger seat and the driver obviously was drunk mm. and he just like drove too fast, hit a turn. You know, I think the car flipped or slid on its side or something, but it caused me to break my neck in two places. So like it's called a C2, C2 vertebrae. And so that just like broke in completely do two different spots. Um, you know, and it's a miracle that I'm alive and mobile. And, you know, a lot of the doctors were shocked that nothing permanent had happened to me. I mean, I have like my range of motion in my neck is not 100 percent, but for the most part, I'm, you know, well. Yeah. Um, and just like go when I was going through my injury, I was sitting at home in like a halo brace and there was just like at Pepperdine, it's just a small school and there were just so many like rumors. So, you know, I had to take a break from school the first semester of senior year. Um, but like I said, like there are just so many different stories like being talked about on what happened in the crash. Yeah. So I think like I wrote a blog post or something and I put it on my Facebook and it was like kind of crazy because it was just like on Facebook and I got so many friend requests and so many like like Instagram requests in a time where like that wasn't people weren't following people they didn't know but people were kind of like curious as to what happened was it people like sharing your blog posts I think like honestly people were nosy <laughs> like it was even before like I remember waking up from the hospital and going home and signing on to Facebook for the first time and I had like 26 friend requests from wow. people I didn't know at school oh, okay I see what you're saying so they were like trying to see what happened so eventually I was you know, like the school put out, the school newspaper put out an article and it was just, a lot of people were talking about it. So I kind of just like wanted to have my own narrative. I know this is a really long story no, on no, how no. I got started and mm -hmm. being outspoken on social. Not but, at all. Um, 
But anyway, so I would just get random messages from people saying like, hey, Jordan, like, I'm so sorry with what happened to you. But I just want to tell you that, unfortunately, like I've drink and drove like a lot of times. But after hearing your story, I'm not going to anymore. Wow, that's awesome. And, you know, it was just like really moving. And I was like, wow, like if something terrible that happened to me can like change other people and show them that it's like not okay to drink and drive like m- maybe this was like all worth it yeah um you know like it had to happen to me but maybe like 20 people 100 people aren't are now not going to drink and drive so yeah just being in the social media industry like i also like organically gained a following just from hanging out with like influencers that i would have to take to lunch and um network with and so like once I hit like around 10, 10K, 10,000 followers, I was like, you know, I should use my social media to talk about my drunk driving experience. Because at that point you were like working for other, um, not agencies, but like other companies yeah. like promoting uh, their social media, right. but you weren't like necessarily working too hard on yours. Right, exactly. Like once I hit 10,000, that's when I was like, oh, maybe I should try a little harder. But that was also when I was like, hey, like, this is a platform I can use to like invite other people or at least inform them on the dangers of drunk driving. So it kind of started there. And I think just like once something like that happens to you, you kind of, you're just like more open-minded to other unfair and unjust things that happen to people around the world. Yeah. Um, and then I guess like fast forward to today, I'm like, I'm pretty outspoken on like gun control and racial injustice. And, You know, those are, like, the two things I'm also passionate about in addition to, like, anti-drunk driving efforts, so... Do um, you... to Sorry to cut you off, but, like, I I, I, I was just thinking about this, like, when you're talking about that. Obviously, there's been, like, a lot of issues in society, like, coming up in the recent past. Do you think that these things have been happening for, like, quite some time now, but just social media has brought awareness to people on it? Or do you think that for some reason in the past, I don't know, eight to nine years, however long social media has been prominent, that these things are just happening, like, recently, if if that makes sense? I mean, I'm not an expert, so I don't want to say, like, what I'm saying is, like, fact. Right. But when it comes to racial injustice, absolutely, Mm -hmm. like, these things probably happened even more. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. Before social media, like I'm sure people now maybe act a different way or try to hide like their racism because they don't want to get caught on social media and have that be exposed. So if anything, I think, you know, racism was. Yeah. Racism has been been, has always been prominent. That's interesting. Yeah, because I feel like it's kind of holding people accountable, like you said, and like to where like celebrities, like people right. get canceled like right. real fast, like by, because it's saying some shit that they didn't know was getting recorded, right? right? So it's holding people accountable, which is awesome. Also just like the mental health, healthness, like fact of it too, just like how people are so attached to like social media and everything like that. How do you kind of get away from it being that it is your job? How, how do you like separate yourself from it I don't know. I guess I like I try not to take it so seriously. I think I think like sometimes I just like remind myself like that's what it is. It's just your job. Just like, you know, everyone needs a break from their job. Yeah. I kind of like need to have like that detachment from social media, which is hard because, you know, I do it for work, but I also do it for pleasure, just like everyone else does. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting dynamic. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like hard to think about if you're not in it. You know what I mean? Because I think I spend way much too much too much time on it. I'm not even like, <laughs> I don't like get paid to. Do. I I'm a digital marketing specialist yeah. for my job, so I do it for like other other people. Right. But for myself, I know like I spend way too much time on it. But I mean, just like how many people are attached to their phone and mm-hmm. like how it affects their like like mental state of being I, I kind of think is just like a downfall of it but yeah. I guess like anything else in life there's right. positives and negatives right I mean and I think it, it matters like w- how you use social media too mm-hmm. because I'm so thankful for social media and also like the amount of I don't really beat myself up for the amount of time 
I spend on social media because a lot of it's like on Twitter and that's where I like see a lot of what's mm -hmm. going on in the world. Whereas like, you know, in college, I didn't pay attention ever at all. Like, you know, True. like I knew about like the major news stories, but I didn't go seek out that information like I do now Yeah, because it's so easy. It's like at, at my fingertips. Yeah. It's kind of like looking at the newspaper. Right. Like you're so accessible. And that's true. That's another thing, too. Like a lot of things we would be unaware of, like as far as our generation um, to where it's now, it's just like it's be it's given us more like, I guess, make it made us more conscious of things that are going on. For a lot of people, like when people message me, they're like, oh, I didn't know this was going on. So like for me, it's like I'm just sharing the information. You do what you want with it. Right. You form your own opinions. But this is what's happening. Um, whereas like, you know, I I didn't really <laughs> Ha we didn't really have that when you know like six years ago yeah it was just like watching the news that's how you found yeah out. you had to watch the news you had to like yeah. you had to pick up a newspaper but it wasn't like just organically in your timeline that's true if that makes sense no no that definitely does and that's why i always like tell people like you know i do think it's great for influencers to have a voice and talk about you know kind of more of the important things um because of their platform and the number of people who are following them. But at the same time, I think it's like to everybody's duty, no matter like what they're following is to talk about the issues that they care about and are passionate about because they can influence the mind of just like one person, just like I did when I had like my Facebook, you yeah, know? Yeah, definitely. People uh, like that's how you kind of enact change, right? You, like the first yeah. step is kind of just talking about it. And right. Like making something happen. Like is people have a lot of power and for me, like, I didn't realize that until, uh, like, I was an athlete. Like, athletes have a lot of power, too, and a lot of them don't know, don't know that. Yeah. But I like seeing athletes. Like, some of my favorite athletes out there in, like, professional or college sports are, like, the ones that actually talk on these type of, of topics yeah. because they don't realize how big their platform is, you yeah. know? Um, an example of that is just, like, at my old university at CSU in Colorado, um, there's been, like systemic racial issues that have been going on um and a lot of the athletes i got involved you know like where they are threatening to not play anymore wow. or what, what's like, you know, like whatever it may be they're starting protests and right. stuff and it actually like caused change caused change like people were joining like students were joining them and on these marches and uh these protests and it's just like awesome to see that you know? yeah and that wouldn't have been um you know doable like without years ago without social media and like being able to like spread this message like as fast as we're able to now yeah so exactly that's awesome. are you still blocked by chrissy teigen <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i yeah i'm still i'm blocked by chrissy teigen on twitter <laughs> this is the second i'm i've this is my third podcast but the second time it's been brought up which is <laughs> so a, funny it's a serious problem it's a serious problem <laughs> she blocked me because i disagreed with her that friends this show isn't fun she said it's not funny and i told her she was wrong and she blocked me oh my god do you wish you could take it back <laughs> i mean yeah, i didn't think what i said was that bad but yeah i do wish i could take it back because she's now funny. i'm missing out on all her tweets <laughs> that's true if anybody has any ties out there is yeah. watching listening to this to chrissy teigen tweet at her right now and let her know to unblock at un jordan risa unblock yeah. at jordan risa um but yeah going back to the whole uh Drunk, drunk driving incident that happened i think that uh yeah like what happened was terrible but at the same time it like it's cool to see that you took so much positive out of that situation and it's caused you to kind of become more conscious of, of social issues going on because i mean when we went to the uh the walk like mm -hmm. there were so many families that lo like lost people like and actually like people were like dead and they're like there there were children there right. were mothers and fathers and they left these whole families behind all because one person decided to right. like get in the car and drink and drive right. you know so uh, it's it's awesome to see that like also that like how lucky i guess you were too that yeah. you didn't i mean you came out walking that's the thing like i you know it it really was so shitty that that happened but you know when i was like in my halo i was kind of drawn to like looking up more about like drunk driving crashes and like statistics and things like that and it was like heartbreaking to see like I had made a decision to get in a car like admittedly I was really drunk and I didn't realize 
yeah. that my driver was drunk but mm -hmm. there are people who are like completely completely innocent who are just walking down the street and yeah. get hit by a drunk driver or you know a child is in the car with their family and a drunk driver hits them and if i'm able to walk away from this like you know for the most part fine then i'm also going to try to use like this this life I've, I have to like bring more awareness to it. Yeah, I know it works because like it caused me to like actually care about the situation. I've never had like anybody I know like be involved in a drunk driving, right. driving incident, but you, yeah. you know what I mean? So, but the fact that you like you, like not rep so hard for it, but like you mm -hmm. push so hard and care so much about it, um, like it makes me care about it too. And yeah. it makes me like, it affects me as well. Yeah, and I think that's like what people have to think about. It's like, don't wait for something to happen to you or someone you love to get involved and to speak out because by then it could be too late. But not too long after that whole incident happened, you met Ben, right? Yeah. I mean, so I, it was September, 2012 is when um, the crash happened and I met Ben May, 2013, May, 2013. Yeah. He stole you away from me. He stole. I'm so, yeah. I'm so mad. So, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Levi actually like used to come hang out with my brother and I'd be like just yeah. like a sad little girl in my like halo brace watching revenge or something <laughs> on TV and like Levi would come over with my brother and pretend to flirt with me and it was like just like funny because like <laughs> come on yeah it, served, know, like, it served a couple purposes i was just like oh i have a little crush on her but at the same time i like, want to make ricky a little mad <laughs> yeah <laughs> like levi definitely like made me laugh you know on those yeah. in those dark days for sure yeah but that's awesome that to see like how i mean i have no idea how your guys's marriage is but it seems like it's like pretty healthy yeah i mean it's like i don't know like you know everyone says that you meet the right person at the right time and I really feel that to be true because you know after my before my crash and before my injury I was like I'm sure you knew like I was like a crazy party girl like I uh, loved partying I went out like three to four times a week I loved drinking like I thought that was like really cool and fun <laughs> and after the crash like you know I just had different priorities and the same things that I had fun doing before wasn't that fun to me now and I met Ben and I actually met him out, but we had, we were both sober and, you know, I found out like maybe like a few dates in that he didn't drink. He's never really drank before. He's not really interested. And wow. my friend Courtney, who was with me when I met Ben, she was like laughing. She was like, you know, if this were like old Jordan, like a guy like that wouldn't have ever like caught your attention because your lifestyles would have been so different. That's true. But you know, I met Ben at a time where like my partying days were like pretty much over and gone. Over. Yeah, the phase <laughs> is over. What What do you think it is that like helps you guys be so compatible? Oh God, I just like I'm. I feel like I'm s like we're opposites. Okay. And I think he just like he has a lot of patience. I'm really impatient, or like I'm I could get like really fired up sometimes, and he is so chill and mellow so i think i don't know i think that's what makes us compatible and not but heads as much as i would with someone who had a similar personality type to me right was it one of those things when you guys met where it's like you knew like absolutely this is the guy absolutely not <laughs> absolutely not i met ben and he was like saying he was from england and i was like oh cool like a summer fling like <laughs> down is your summer guy yeah I, I thought that's what i thought um and then here I am, and now I'm married. <laughs> but That's funny. it definitely it took me a while. Um, ben had to ask me to be his girlfriend twice. Oh, you didn't say you didn't say <laughs> they asked him the first time, no, or the second time. Uh, what? Yeah. <laughs> so I was really unsure. No, I I mean I hadn't really like I didn't really date. I don't know all throughout college, like since high school. I Ben was my second boyfriend ever. Wow. Yeah, okay. and I didn't really date anyone you know between my my first high school boyfriend and him so wow. I, I think I was like just really hesitant and I was kind of confused I wasn't really used to a guy like being so intentional and pursuing me as much as he did yeah so I, awesome. I don't know I was just like I don't trust this I'm like this is weird <laughs> too I'm not good to be true to shout out to Ben for being so persistent yeah it's awesome to see yeah and persistent in a non-creepy way because you know 
there are guys who are persistent but it's like no wrong it's, intentions yeah and it's like stalkery yeah i think too like one of the things i'm realizing like as i've been through like a i haven't been in like a lot of relationships definitely i think i went through like a four or five year gap of just like not yeah. dating anybody yeah i had a five year gap yeah and, and something like i realized just like by being observant of other people in relationships and everything like that is just like what makes like a healthy relationship work i think is like the number one thing is just like compatibility and values just because i think like especially in our generation with relationships people like get and then kind of like the honeymoon phase yeah. and it dies out like you'll see them like on social media yeah. just like posting oh. and then like so many couples <laughs> like they're like super hot for like six months and then yep. after a year they're they're completely done and you're like what i thought you guys were in love and this yeah. was the one and yep yep and it and it's just like i think i don't I, i'm not married or anything like that so like i don't know what a healthy relationship is but from like what my standpoint is i think it's just like having the same values and how compatible you are with that person if you want to like obviously be with them forever which is the point of marriage then like it's important that you guys seem to see the same values you know yeah. what i mean like and i think a lot of people it's like funny because you know a lot of people have like this checklist of things that they want like their significant other to have and a lot of the times it like values doesn't really make it onto that list they're like oh he has to be like above six feet and he has to be has to make this much money and you know he has to be a doctor or whatever and you're not really taking into account of like like what your guys's life will be like yeah um but i think that like i learned that with ben too like we we see a lot of like the same things and we're we care about a lot of the same issues um and i think it just like especially now and like this era it's so obvious now on like what kind of values people have yeah um you know i think like just like this in this time where we have like a really divisive president and i can't imagine like dating someone who supports him yeah it wouldn't work and it wouldn't work and i i also like would you know i would have been blind to that just because like i didn't pay attention to politics or like really social issues you know years years ago yeah and you know let's say i dated someone like i don't know six ten years ago and i was still with that person then all of a sudden we have like all of these issues coming up and you're like fuck like Mm -hmm. who am i with you know what i mean like because just like these topics weren't as prevalent um before as they are now and do you think that um like celebrities athletes influencers people that have like a big followings do you think a lot of that's one of the reasons why they don't speak out as much about these issues just because they don't want to lose that fan base or following of the people who thought like on the contrary on the yeah like, with whatever issues it is yeah for sure i think a lot of people are definitely afraid of you know losing followers i think that's part of it i think a part of it is also like a lot of people feel like they don't know enough or or maybe feel like they're behind and um and talking about these things but the thing is like i don't think if you're not an actual expert in these topics like you're just not an expert like we're yeah. all you know we're kind of like all on the same playing field and but we have access to the same information and that's just what it is we're giving people access to that information and i don't think people should be scared to talk to not talk about things because they don't know enough like they're just sharing information that they've come across yeah they're not saying, saying hey you need to believe this yeah Um, and and that's how you said you use you use your platform to give information not necessarily demand like somebody you need to right you have to vote for this one person right just like letting it known that this is happening right yeah and i think like going back to you know celebrities or influencers or athletes who are afraid to speak up like i but at the same time i do absolutely think people are afraid of that and it's like interesting i get messages all the time of like just like girls who follow me who thank me they're like you know thank you so much for like speaking out on these things like i know it must be so hard and you must be like nervous to lose followers i'm like no honestly like those people don't have to follow me i don't i'm not doing see the thing is like i never got into social media for the followers i told myself that i 
if I ever had a platform, I'd use it for good. Okay. And not just for numbers and to work with this clothing brand, you know, yeah. like obviously those are like really nice perks, but yeah, you know, that was never the goal. And so that's not something that I'm afraid of. Okay. That's good. And yeah, you're posting your content. You're like super witty with everything that you do. Is there something like, like some experiences or like the way you grew up that kind of molded you into like just how you are today? I mean, my dad would probably want to take the credit, credit for my humor. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess like my dad, like we would always joke around and that was like kind of like how we could talk to with one another. So I think that like it definitely helps, yeah. you know, kind of for my for my humor. But I have no <laughs> idea. So. And it, I think it makes you too more like approachable and authentic because you can sell. You're not like taking it too serious. Mm -hmm. Like you're just having fun with your posts. Whereas like a lot of influencers and like social people on social media that are just like probably thinking for like hours are just like using all these like s doing science on like which hashtags and stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have like f you know I know people that are like completely paralyzed by like posting because they're like unsure that it's going to do well. It's like, if you like it, just post it. Like I posted, there's like a book I was reading and there was a quote I liked in the book and I took a photo of it and I put it on social media and I'm like, or I put it on social media, I put it on Instagram yeah. and I didn't, you know, I knew it was going to get likes, but yeah. I also like, I don't really care because I want my Instagram to be, an, an extension and a reflection of who I am, what I'm interested in, what I care about, what I stand for, whatever, not just what's going to make the numbers go up. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Does Ben like the Lakers? No. I mean, oh, I think yeah. now he does. <laughs> but when, he, when we met, he was a Heat fan, and that was, like, such a turnoff because I thought he was just, like, a LeBron bandwagon fan. Was that when they had a super team? Yeah, but oh, okay. he was actually really into Dwayne Wade. And oh. so I was like, okay, that's that's very different than just being a LeBron fan, yeah, for which we are now. We are so. now. For the listeners out there who don't know, Jordan's, like, a big, like, sh you were in a basketball family, right? Like, your yeah. dad, your brothers played basketball, mm -hmm. and you're just, like, a huge Laker fan. Um how do you feel about, like, just the LeBron thing? Because I know you were, like, a big LeBron hater. I used to hate LeBron yeah. so much. But I don't know, going back to, like, what you were talking about, about how, like, you really, like, look up to athletes who have a voice. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I hated LeBron for so long, but you kind of look at what he's done with his platform and his yeah. influence and – you really can't say anything bad about that guy. You know, he's yeah. donating, donating a billion dollars to build a school yeah. and all, I mean, there's countless other shit that he's done. Yeah. Like he, he's he does, very vocal. Mm -hmm. He does cringy shit. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> like a lot of the shit he does is just like super cringy, but how do you feel about the, the whole like super team thing? Do you think it's kind of like, like, I don't know. We didn't. We didn't like like super teams forming, but the Lakers are kind of like starting to do that. But it's like there's only really like two of them now. You know? Yeah, yeah. There's so a lot of duos now. Like right. duos are spread out. I think league. duos are like they're cool. That's totally fine. <laughs> I mean, we had Shaq and Kobe. True. You know. Yeah. Like the Bulls had like their little trio. I don't know. I don't mind it. I just I. Sorry to all the Warriors fans out there, but like I just couldn't with Durant joining. Oh yeah, I know you. A championship team like that was the softest <laughs> shit I have ever seen in basketball, personally. Yeah, so. that was just like completely unfair. Yeah, and I I wonder how they're gonna do. Who they have left? Curry and uh, Clay. Curry and Clay, and Draymond. Draymond, so yeah, Draymond, yeah. so there. Would you, I don't know if I consider him a superstar, but mm. I mean, as yeah, much you, as he thinks, <laughs> as much as he thinks, yeah, but yeah, I but mean, but it's like, but <laughs> just going back to social media, it's like I love to hate the Warriors, but like Steve Kerr is so awesome, like, yeah, yeah he, well, I see what's awesome about. I don't know too much about Steve Kerr. He's really, he's really vocal about like politics and social issues, and he's he says what's right and what's wrong, and I think that's like really, you know, admirable. So I really like them. I feel like on a personal level. On a personal level, yeah. so you're kind of conflicted with like 
<laughs> like, kind of like LeBron. It's like I love to hit him, and then, and then he, he was like doing all of this good stuff, and then he yeah, and then he joined the Lakers. So it's like okay, great, great, yeah, great for me. I don't have to hate him anymore. <laughs> you don't have to work hard to hit yeah. him or anything like that. But yeah, that's awesome to see that. I hope I hope they really live up to the hype this year. And oh God, same. I just like feel like we've had so much disappointment as a Lakers fan. So I'm like, yeah. I can't really get that excited. Yeah, ever since Kobe left, but. Yeah, let's digress a little bit. What's next for you as far as just, like, your career path and everything with social media? Have you... Honestly, like, I don't, I don't like, really, like, have, like, a concrete plan in place. It's kind of crazy because I've always been, like, kind of, like, a type A person. And I always, like, you know, mapped out my life. But I've just really been enjoying, like, freelance. And I've been... I'm, I'm still learning on like how much I could slash would want to take on like you know in the past few months I went from six clients to four because I'm like I I went freelance so that I could have more personal freedom and right. I'm like attached to my laptop even more than I was at my other job so I yeah. like made that conscious decision to go from like six clients to four clients and that's on top of like all of my personal social media Mm -hmm. you know partnerships and collaborations so I think right now I'm just like really taking the rest of the year to kind of see what the balance is going to be in terms of like my personal social media and then the client side do you have aspirations to start like your own agency or anything like that I've I've had this talk with like friends and people in the industry and I just like the more I think about it the more I don't aspire to have an agency and and honestly, I thought that I thought that I wanted that for myself like years ago. But now that I'm like in this position and I'm freelancing, I see that, you know, I can make the decision on who I want to work with and I can keep 100 percent of the profits. And, you know, I may not have like a big shiny office and like a team of 30 or 100, but you know, I'm making what I want to make. I'm taking trips I want to take. I'm working yeah. with the people I want to work with. And you're happy, right? And I'm you're happy. happy. That's yeah. what matters. Gotcha. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. So we're almost wrapped up, but uh, one of the last questions I want to ask was what would you, um, what advice would you give to somebody who's looking to get into social media, uh, doesn't know how, or just wants to not get necessarily where you're at, but like obtain the ex- success that you've had? I definitely think like gaining experience. So, you know, interning when you can, or even if like your friend has like a small vintage shop or, you know, like your uncle has a business, like use those opportunities as a way to like, um, like build your social media experience and portfolio. Kind of like practice. Right. Um, and I think like so experience and I think also networking, like I said before, it's like really the people that, you know, you have to you really have to know the right people and, you know, know the right influencers and to really have like a flourishing social media career, one to like get clients, but two to also like seed product to the right people. Right. Um, and I think work ethic, I think a lot of people think that social media is easy and that oh, I can just have an intern do it or I could just have like a junior, a junior level person run all of the social media strategy when it's like such a big part of the business. Yeah, it's something that everyone is on, but it's not necessarily everyone is going to be good at. So you really have to work hard at it just as you would with any other job. Right. It's like everyone eats food, but nobody, not everybody's a good food critic. Right. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, Thanks for answering that. So lastly, like where can people find you on social? Um, I'm on Instagram at Jordan Risa, J-O-R-D-A-N-R-I-S-A. I'm still on Tumblr, even though it's, oh, it's really? 2019. <laughs> do you find gems on there? Yeah, or? I do. Okay, I love cool. Tumblr um, when I have the time to get on it. And I'm on Twitter. If you want to know my real, my real, real thoughts, <laughs> they're on Twitter. Dope. Um also at Jordan Risa. Yeah, your Twitter's popping. I love your Twitter. Wait, I didn't know you were active on Twitter. Uh, Did I? I'm not as active. I'm just, I guess I, I get tweet watch. every now and then. Yeah. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, your Twitter is popping. I love your Twitter. Last question would be what, uh, what would you tell a young 16 year old you, if you had like the chance to have a conversation with yourself? If I could tell, Oh God, 16 year old Jordan. Yeah. Don't drink and drive and don't get into cars with drunk drivers. Um, I would tell her that partying is really overrated, <laughs> so just stop <laughs> while you can. Um, yeah. But I mean, other than that, I think I turned out okay, so. Yeah, awesome. All right, Jordan, well, I appreciate you coming on. This was great. You dropped a lot of value, and yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks. Of thanks, course. Levi. That's a wrap. <laughs>